Good morning, Barry, William Magnetti here, your host of the Comeback Game podcast and this special series being the Freedom Series. Uh, just let me know in the comments in the chat if you can hear me loud and clear, if you can see me. Uh, my team will be in the chat throughout this answering any questions that you may have. And today I'm super excited to welcome our guest, Alan Dibb, to the show. Uh, Alan helps small business owners and takes them from confusion to clarity in marketing their businesses. Uh, Alan's also a serial entrepreneur, rebellious marketer, and uh, technology expert. He's also the number one best-selling author and has started and grown success and started, grown and exited uh, many successful companies in various industries. Uh, Alan grew his first business, or one of his first businesses, from startup to four years being named on the Business Review Weekly. The BRW is one of Australia's fastest-growing companies. And his latest book, The One Page Marketing Plan, is touted by many as the marketing bible, has sold more than 150,000 copies and has held the number one spot, uh, bestseller spot in Amazon since publication in 2016. Alan, welcome to the show. Hey, Barry, wonderful to be on. Mate, so grateful for you to be here. And uh, look, I'm hopefully soon going to join you. We're looking to release my first book uh, in a couple of weeks' time, actually the 3rd of August. And uh, for us, like, I really want to help to liberate the freedom of business owners. You know, I'm sure you've seen a lot yourself, and you know, you've been through the business journey that uh, it can be a bit of a hard slog and most don't make it. And uh, mm -hmm. we're at the Game Change on a massive mission to uh, help more business owners to experience more financial abundance, more time freedom and to liberate them in every area of life as well. So mate, let's dive straight in the one page marketing plan. How did this come about? Yeah, so um, when I started uh, coaching small business owners and entrepreneurs a few years ago, one of the first things I wanted them to do was to put together a marketing plan um, because uh, that was something that had helped me in the past really clarify what to do from a marketing perspective, uh, how to price, how to position, how to do all of those kinds of things. And, you know, I got a lot of resistance. I got a lot of pushback. It was like too hard, too difficult, not sure where to start, need to hire a consultant, all of this sort of stuff. Um, and so I created a process that made it super, super easy for someone to create a really comprehensive direct response marketing plan on a yeah. single page in literally 20 to 30 minutes. Wow. So it was a process long before it was a book. And, um, you know, I found that I, I got a lot more uh, take up. So people who'd never had a marketing plan ever in the course of their business now had a comprehensive marketing plan that really gave them clarity. Um, and so it, it worked so well with my client base that I thought oh, I want to get it out to a much larger audience and, and hence the book. Yeah, mate, that's fantastic. I think I was thinking this morning in the shower, I was like, you know, a business owner that's not investing in marketing technology, it's like someone trying to grow an indoor plant without watering it. It's, <laughs> yes, uh, it's, it's going to last for a period of time and then yes. it's going to wilter and die. Yes. And I, I meet a lot of business owners that um, they're like, oh, you know, our business survives on referrals. Mm. Although that is a form of marketing. Uh, yes. I've also met a lot of business owners that overnight their referral marketing's dried up when they've been growing a business successfully for many years doing that. Mm. Um, what I love too is that you've taken something that can be quite complex and to some degrees esoteric and mm. bring it down into one page. So can you talk us through what are some of the key elements that helped you pull together that one page marketing plan? Well, um, what I did was uh, I wrote the book I wish I had when I was starting out in business because I, I'm not from a a business background. I'm not from an academic background. I'm not from marketing or anything like that. At my In my very first business, I, I was basically a dead broke IT geek. And I was just trying to figure out how do I get clients in the door? Just very, very simple. And, you know, uh, I'm not a creative type of uh, personality or all of that. I'm, I, I'm from an engineering background, very process driven. So I wanted to know what, what was step one, what was step two, what was step three? How do I get clients in the door? You know, because we had a business that, um, you know, were the products and services that our clients really loved the, our, our products and services, but we just didn't have enough of those clients. And I distinctly remember having a conversation with my business partner at the time saying, hey, we've got a great business. We've got really good margins. Our clients love us. We've just got this small little thing uh, called sales and marketing that we haven't quite cracked. <laughs> and so I thought we had the major thing sorted out and this minor thing we needed. to. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, very much I had it ass backwards, right? So yeah. 
<laughs> so um, r really, um, th that's where it ca came about. And I probably spent a decade learning through trial and error, through attending seminars, through hiring coaches, through getting consultants in, all of those sorts of things. And I made every mistake in the book. And, you know, I, I just thought there's got to be a better way. Uh, it, it shouldn't take hundreds of thousands of dollars and a decade to work this stuff out. And I don't know, maybe I'm a bit slow on the uptake, but um, but I got value from from everyone that I worked with, every coach, um, every book I read, but you know, I got a small piece of the pie. I didn't have anything that could really take me comprehensively from zero to marketing hero. And so that's what I really tried to do with the book. I really assume nothing. Literally at the start of the book, we define what is marketing. So uh, it assumes nothing. And, you know, I've been criticized uh, uh, for that um, somewhat. Um, so people have said it's too simple and you know it's it's the audience that i'm writing for uh, are small businesses and entrepreneurs it's not other marketers so um, i'm not claiming to teach you something that you would never ever think of or anything like that i'm really yeah. talking about the fundamentals and helping a small business owner understand those fundamentals and basically to know what to do yeah it's interesting you say that like i look back and some of the best mentors or coaches i've had one thing that i've really admired about them is their ability to take something that was seemingly quite complex mm. and break it down in such a way that I got it and I understood it. And I remember for me, one thing that I was really confused around early on is like, what's the difference between like a vision and mission or a purpose in business? Mm. It's like everyone you speak to kind of has a different way of, of describing purpose or vision and mission. Yes. And I look at the book that um, I've just finished putting together and one of the, the clients that have read it said, look, it's, it's, it's so simple and easy to comprehend and put these things mm -hmm. in place because it lays it out step by step, which it sounds right. like the one page marketing plan is exactly just that. Yeah. Um, if you guys are watching this on the live right now, just comment like, what do you find as being the biggest challenge that you face in marketing your business right now? Um, Alan, curious to know, like, how have you found this one page has stood the test of time during the current pandemic that we've just on the, the, the back end of here at the moment? Well, I, I really think it's more important than ever to have a plan. And here's the thing. Um, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I've got a business plan or I've worked with a consultant or whatever, and we've put together our three-year plan or our five-year plan. Well, had, you know, the problem with a three-year plan or a five-year plan is we don't, we, we can't know when the pandemic's going to hit. We can't <laughs> know when the next recession is going to be and all of that sort of thing. So uh, it's kind of... Uh, crazy to have like a three year plan or five year plan. I'm not saying don't have a vision, don't have goals, all of those sorts yeah. of things. But if you're planning for everything just to go according to your spreadsheet projections, um, it's probably unlikely to happen. So what kind of plan do you need? You need a plan yeah. that's practical. You need a plan that can be changed at any time when you've got new and better information. Um, and so you need something that's practical. That's not going to be just shoved in the top drawer of your desk and never see the light of day again. So those kind of big, thick uh, business plans that have charts and projections and spreadsheets and all of that, you know, I'm not a big fan of those. I, I want a plan that's practical that I can literally have on my desk or pin up on in my office and, um, and can be easily changed and pivoted when I've got new and better information. So pandemic hits, right. What do we have to do? What, what do we need to do more of? What do we need to cut? What do we need to change? How do we reframe our offers? How do we change our messaging? So all, all of that, and you can't really do that with just a, you know, a 75 page three year plan, <laughs> right? So uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's just not practical. Yeah. It's funny. Um, we, I personally spoke to a lot of both my, my clients, our clients and prospects during the, the start middle and towards the end of this, this pandemic. And uh, one thing that I feel really uh, shook and collapsed a lot of business owners was their inability to reposition themselves during this point in time, because they had this plan that they were so heavily invested that everything was going according to plan. Yeah. Prior to the pandemic hitting yet. The people that I spoke to that were killing, killing it and winning uh, through that period of time were the ones that were able to see this thing come in and uh, calibrate and adjust to the changing environment. And they managed to pivot their positioning. They managed to change their offering. They yep. managed to even some guys, um, a trading client of ours, they went from, from winning to overnight things shut off. And mm. we had a conversation. They literally changed two lines of ad copy to speak to the conversations in the head of where people were at. And within 24 hours, his, his ads were taking off again. Yeah. yeah there were others that were like, oh, but our ads are working last week. Let's just keep running them out. 
Mm. So I think, like you said, you know, yes, you need to have a vision and mission and you need to know where you're going, that North Star. You also need to be focused a lot more on the game that you're playing this quarter, you know, in this month and this week, because we are in, in rapidly changing environments. I don't think we've seen the end of it yet for, no. for 2020. Um, and you've got an opportunity to, to win through these times if you're kind of willing to, to still be clear of where you're going, but let go of necessarily how to get there. Yes. I've had a couple of comments come in here. Uh, Brian asks, where to start if you're just starting from scratch with your marketing plan? Well, um, starting from scratch is a really great place to start. So, um, so th there's an intersection of three things that I like to consider when you're, when you think starting from scratch. So, um, and the first one is who do I want to work with? So, um, and so part of that breaks down into three areas. Who's going to be fun to work with? Because we want to look forward to Mondays. We don't want to be on Sunday evening going, oh, damn, tomorrow is Monday. Um, we, we want to be uh, looking forward to Mondays. That's something that I really, uh, re really promote within my uh, client base is, hey, let's look forward to Mondays. So who's going to be fun to work with? Next, who's going to be profitable to work with? So some, somebody might be fun to work with, but not so profitable to work with. So, you know, it's a business and we want to make money. And the last uh, piece of the puzzle is who's really going to value what you do and pay you a lot of money for what you do, because they can be fun, they can be profitable, but they might not really value what you do, in, in which case it's kind of going to be really hard to to, uh, to convert them and uh, market to them and all of that sort of stuff. So you really want to create a, an environment where you're working with people who are fun to work with, who are profitable and who really value what you do. Absolutely. And I, I put that down to you want people who are going to pay, they're going to play and they're going to stay. Mm, I love it. I Absolutely. Love it. So uh, if you're watching, let us know, like, are you currently working with customers that you're excited to jump out of bed and work with? Uh, or are you maybe working with some customers that you're working with just because you feel you need them to pay your bills, yes. which is a common thing that we see amongst small business owners is that, you know, they have these clients on because they think they need to pay the bills. Yes. But they don't understand the sacrifice in emotional energy uh, and also business revenue potential by saying yes to everything and not being clear of who you actually want to work with and setting those firm boundaries. Yeah. And th there's a big op opportunity cost. So, um, you know, when you, when you say yes to everything, um, there's a lot that you're saying no, no to. So ha having your not to do list is as important or possibly more important than your to do list. And it can be hard to say no to revenue, especially when you're, when you're starting out, but, uh, and maybe in the beginning, maybe you, you do need to work with some sub up to more customers to to pay the bills but you really want to have a vision of who you actively go after so so maybe business comes your way and it's not optimal okay fine you need to pay your bills but who do you market to who do you actively go after it's a big mistake to just say hey we do everything for everyone because your message is really going to be diluted yeah uh, i speak a lot in chapter four of my book the path to freedom around values and I speak about them in reference to having team, hiring team based on values rather than skill set, because I believe that some of the right values fit for your company, you can train them on skill set. But I see that marketing is no different. We touched on that a little bit in the book as well, uh, not too deeply, but you know, you want to have clients the same thing that, that resonate with what you resonate with, that, that believe what you believe, that share that same values alignment, because otherwise, what's the point of working for them in the first place? Is it for the money? Like you're not in business. And, and I would express to say that most people aren't in business for the money. They perceive that they are, but it gives them some sense of satisfaction, which can very quickly uh, get sucked away or sucked down if you're not working with people that you enjoy working with as well. Very much so, very yeah. much so. How do you go about, um, oh, hang on, there's a question here. Uh, any tips on lead generation, i.e. sending quality traffic to your site? Uh, yeah, the, uh, I mean, the, there's, a, there's a ton. Um, the thing that, um, that I often find uh, people kind of get hung up on is okay what's the latest seo hack what's the latest tool what's uh you know should i use um click funnels or should i use this other tool or or whatever and and then I, I really don't want you to think of you know your website and just words like traffic like traffic is very very impersonal um so you know, we could send you a ton of traffic, but it may not be the right people. It may be people who are the wrong fit. So what I want you to do is really think about H, H to H. You know, people sometimes say, hey, what do you do in B2B or what do you do in B2C or how do we get traffic and all of that? And I, I, I like to pull it back and say, look, 
let's think of it in H to H, which is human to human. So uh, how do you, uh, how do you create a message that people say, Hey, I want that because I would rather have uh, 10 people visiting my website who are perfectly qualified, who are the right fit, who are, you know, a brilliant uh, part of my demographic than a million people who are just random and who who are not a good fit, right? Because it makes no sense. So it, I want you to think way above traffic. I want you to think at a higher level. I want you to think uh, who is going to say, put their hand up and, and see your stuff and say, hey, that is for me. Yeah. So that's really the, the critical element. So having an offer that converts. And so, like I said, you'll do far, far better with having a small amount of traffic with the right people who want your stuff, who value your stuff, who are fun to deal with, all of those sorts of things, than heaps and heaps of traffic of just random unqualified people. So I would pull back and think, think more about your offer, your target market, your messaging, and who's going to see your stuff and go, bam, I really need that. And so uh, thinking at that level is more important than thinking about traffic and all of those. Now, I'm not saying traffic is bad or SEO is bad or any of those sort of things. Uh, I, I, I like and do all of those things, but really uh, starting with an offer that actually converts something that people actually want and put their hand up for, uh, that's way, way more valuable. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a mindset shift though, isn't it? Because in some ways, I don't know what it is about the, the entrepreneur mentality, but it's but in many ways, I see a lot of people going out and try to capture mm. as much of the mark as they can. And, and yes. I, I, I equate it to the analogy of like a fisherman going out to fish with a net. It's like people go out trying to capture any customer that's got a heart, heart rate and a credit card. Mm, exactly. So that's like going out fishing with a net and pulling that net as, as big as you can to catch more fish. What actually happens is the netting gets bigger and the ideal fish slip through. Yet it's a significant mindset shift to be clear on, okay, I want to go after this specific client, this specific, yeah, specific customer. How, how do you get clear, I guess, on that, Alan? Like, how do you get clear of who you really want to target? You spoke before about obviously they pay, they play, and uh, they stay. But how do you really hone down that? Well, uh, th there's two ways to approach it. So, um, first of all, if you've been a part of that target market, so let's say, for example, you're, you're targeting dentists and you've been a dentist before um, or you are a dentist, then that can help a lot. So you've experienced what, what they've experienced. So, for example, my target market are small business owners in the, you know, 1 million to 20 million revenue range. And, and I've been that before. Um, and so I've experienced what it, what it's like, what are my fears? What are my frustrations? What are my desires? Now, if you, you've not ever been part of your target market, um, if you're going into a market that you don't have personal experience in, then you need to essentially take the role of a spy and infiltrate that target market. You know, so many times I'll work with someone and, you know, they say, look, I, I, I'm targeting people who are in financial services or accountants or lawyers or whatever. And the question I ask is, okay, what, what legal conferences have you attended? What medical conferences have you attended? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you want to infiltrate that industry like a spy, like a spy who was going to report on what's happening there. What are they, what are they worried about? What's disrupting their industry at the moment? W what's on their mind right now? Um, what are some of their challenges? What are some of their frustrations, fears, desires, all of those sorts of things. And so uh, you can do that both offline, you can do that online, you, you can interview people um, and you can do like a formal interview, but I like even better informal interviews where you just take them out for a coffee and say, hey, you know, would you mind if I chat to you about your industry for 30 minutes and I'll pick up the tab for lunch? Yeah. Um, so, uh, because between the lines, you can really capture a lot of really good intel. So if you were a spy and I said, look, I want you to go out there and infiltrate this industry and figure out what are some of their challenges? What are their fears? What are their desires? What, what's disrupting them? What are, the, what are they worried about? What are they staying awake at 3 a.m. concerned about? Um, that's what I want you to do. So that can be attending conferences, that can be joining some of the forums or Facebook groups that, that they're in. It can be reading some of their literature. So it, almost every industry has industry journals and magazines and things like that. And you can learn so much stuff that you would never think of uh, just being superficial. So you want to go deep in understanding that industry and understanding what's going on for them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you're enjoying this conversation, hit the like button, uh, tag someone in or share it with someone who thinks needs to see it as well. Um, I kind of, you know, you, you talk about that. 
I, I think it comes back to Parento's principle, the 80-20 rule, which is that, you know, 80% of the work is actually understanding who your customer is and understanding what offer is going to fix the pain point. 20% is, you know, putting together the copy and the funnel and the, and the way to capture them. Yep. You know, I see a lot of people do it the other way around. They jump straight into click funnels, they start writing copy and they wonder why their pages don't convert, but they haven't yep. spent time really getting to know somebody. It's like dating, right? You wouldn't go and meet mm. someone for the first date. You know, somebody met on Tinder and asked them to want to have a baby with you. Uh, you know, unless you have a lot of money and there's some of the surrogacy in place, but you know, like you've got to take things slow. There's an order in place and marketing yes. is very much the same. And this is why, you know, I believe that you can grow a business through any, any climate. Like, I honestly believe that providing that you're willing to do the work to actually dive in to understand who your clients are, what is it they're still buying? Like, like I think there's some stats, stats that I read that the consumers are spending more money uh, during the pandemic than before the pandemic in mm. general. They just weren't spending on the same stuff in the same way that their buying patterns have changed. Yep. True. True. And you know, I've got clients um, in certain industries. I mean, some clients have been negatively impacted. There, there is a small number of those who just had a big physical presence. They've had to shut down all of those sorts of things, but I've got clients that are now just firing on all cylinders. They're doing better numbers than they've ever done before. And it's because, things have pivoted, things have changed. Um, and so you, you need to be aware of what's happening. Uh, you can't be tone deaf from a marketing perspective. So be aware of what, what's happening. You know, people, uh, some people are suffering. Um, and so you do need to change things up, uh, but there's mass loads of opportunity. I've told all my clients, look, don't get rid of your goals for the year, you know, double down on them, you know, inspire your team. Just let's figure out a different way of doing it. If, if um, part of your business unit or even your whole business has been impacted, let's pivot and let's figure out a way that we can still achieve your goals. Yeah. And I, I think um, things like this are going to always come through. You know, it, it's, it's cyclical and it's going to come through and it's going to help to separate the wheat from the chaff, as my grandfather would have said. Yeah. Like the businesses that have got a good war chest that are, that are willing to pivot, like you say, that are willing to adopt a new mindset were the ones that come through versus those that are so stuck in their ways and maybe have been living week to week rather than looking at the longer term vision. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, top tips for anyone who's currently marketing their, business, marketing their business and maybe getting good results. How can they look to put something in place to get slightly better results? Yeah. So, um, uh, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit, a little bit of a bit of a vague question, but, uh, I, I often, um, I often have this discussion with business owners around, uh, budget. And so uh, people say, you know, uh, how much budget should I have uh, for, for my marketing? And, um, what I often say is you only need a budget for marketing if you're losing money, right? So if you're, if you're making, if you're making money, uh, if you're spending a thousand dollars on ads and getting a thousand dollars or more in profit on the bottom line, then crank that baby up, you know, just, just, just crank it up until it's uh, until you're not getting enough uh, click through until your um, your ROI go, goes below your cost. So um, really often it's just a matter of doubling down on what you're already doing. Too many people start looking and diversifying and all of that when um, when something's working rather than doubling down on, on what they're doing. I really like simplicity. So I have about three or four different services that I offer. I mean, there's a hundred things I could be doing, but um, really doubling down on the things that are working and just become refining it and just doing it at a, at a high level on an ongoing basis. I think that that's the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, you know, test and measure, work out what working, double down, don't be kind of distracted by the shiny, shiny thing syndrome yeah. and constantly trying to, to use the latest mini chat sequence or yeah. funnel opportunity, like double down on what's working. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Alan, if you were to, to have a conversation with a 10 year old version of yourself, uh, knowing what you know now being, you know, through business as you have, what advice would you give him? <laughs> I don't think my 10 year old self would have been, uh, would have made much, much sense, but, um, but maybe let's say an 18 year old version of All right, an 18 -year -old version. Uh, version of myself. Um, I, I, I would have, uh, really concentrated on the important stuff uh, earlier on. So, you know, I messed around with nonsense to, uh, too long, I think. So I think I would have really um, just 
spent more time on the important things. It's kind of like that in my book, I talk about the, the 64 four rule. So which says that 4% of your inputs generate 64% of your outputs, kind of like a variation of the 80, 20 rule. In fact, it's the 80, 20 rule applied to itself. So it's 80% of 80 gives you 64 and 20% of 20 gives you four. So it's the 64 four rule. And so uh, there were so many things that I worked on that really were inconsequential that really were essentially comparatively a waste of time. Now, you know, I had a lot of fun in the process and all of that, but I think I, I would have really tried to understand um, thing, things like I told you earlier, where I previously thought having a great product or a great service was the most important thing. And, you know, the sales and the marketing were the less important thing, but really um, that that's completely backwards. So really knowing what was that 4% and working on that more, that's what I would have done for sure. Fantastic. Excellent. And uh, for those that are watching, listening today, whether it be live on the recording, uh, how can they get in contact with you or find it more uh, outside of buying the one page marketing plan book on say, Amazon? Yeah. So uh, the book is on Amazon. Also, if you prefer to listen, it's on audible. A lot of people like to, to listen to it on audio. Um, if you'd like to just, download a free copy of the one page marketing plan canvas. You can do so for free on my website, which is successwise.com. Uh, so just grab a copy of the canvas, uh, join the conversation and I'd love to hear from you. Beautiful. And uh, if you'd like to stay up to date with the release of my new book, The Path to Freedom, uh, make sure that you like The Game Changers on Facebook, subscribe to The Game Changers on YouTube, or uh, sign up on our website to our email list to get up-to-date information. And equally too, stay up to date with the uh, latest of the Freedom Series live streams we're going to be running over the next two months. Uh, Alan, so grateful to have you back on the show, mate. Appreciate the conversation this morning and trust that uh, everyone watching got a bunch of value out of it as well. Fantastic. Fantastic to have been on. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Game Changers podcast. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd love you to do to help us and help yourself to spread the message further. Uh, make sure that you like the Game Changers on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, please subscribe by clicking the link below to ensure that you keep up to date with the weekly episodes we uh, share here at the Game Changers podcast with amazing entrepreneurs and business owners around the world. And of course, like if you're in a position where you may be overwhelmed with business or looking for a way to grow faster and more effectively, and you realize that the key to success is being surrounded by amazing people who have been there and done that before, I'd like to invite you to apply to have a game plan session one-on-one -on -one with one of my team here at The Game Changers. There's no cost if you get through. Uh, all that we ask is that you are doing a minimum of $250,000 per year to really be able to utilize the strategies and tactics and the mindset shifts that we share with you, uh, that you're coachable, that you're a decent person and you're, you know, you're willing to take on board some advice. If not, that's totally cool. Uh, but I know for me, I wouldn't be where I'm right now without the support of so many mentors and coaches and resources along the way. And I'd like to pay that forward and give back to you the opportunity to work with uh, us one on one for free to put together a customized game plan. And the reason we're doing this is a couple of things. Number one is that sometimes it's just the smallest thing that can make the biggest difference. And uh, I think that entrepreneurs and business owners have the option to change the world. And if we can maybe help you to, to make the smallest shift to change your life and your world, uh, you're changing ours in return. The second thing is that we are always looking for amazing clients to work with and to welcome into and invite into the Game Changers community. And so if you then the call, you do feel that there's a huge amount of value there, uh, that we fit, feel that there's a great values fit there, we can have a conversation about working together. But uh, this game plan call, there's absolutely no obligations to work with whatsoever. Allow us to help you with uh, the years and years and years of, of knowledge that we have in growing and scaling great companies. Companies. And uh, I think that uh, business owners are the future of the world. If there's a way that we can help you to create a better business, more profit, more fulfillment, more fun, I would love the opportunity to do that now. So click the link below, book your game plan session, make sure you follow us on social and start to date with the latest episodes of the Game Changers podcast. My name's Barry William McGinnity. Thank you so much for your support and look forward to seeing the next one. Happy now.